Every storm chaser chases for a different reason. Some chase on TV, some chase for science, some chase for YouTube, some chase just for fun. And so every storm chasing vehicle looks just a little bit different. And so I have really kind of customized my vehicle to exactly what my needs are, because quite frankly, my needs extend across most areas of storm chasers. I, of course, chase because I want to see storms, but also I do collect research data. Thankfully, they don't have any damage or anything like that. I do stream for media. I like trying to provide the updates of what's happening with the storm in real time via live video to TV stations or other YouTube channels as well to kind of get the word out. This is a live look from uh, Nick Stewart. I come from a TV background, so of course that's very important. So the combination of research, TV and for fun really kind of encompasses everything that I have in my vehicle here. Now, one of the first things you'll see if you see me out and about storm chasing is the anemometer on the roof of my car. This is an RM Young 5103 anemometer. I have this to collect data once a second to a data logger inside the vehicle. Uh, we are also doing something with the movement of the vehicle. If we are moving down the highway, it's also connected via GPS where it's subtracting our movement to give us a true wind as opposed to an apparent wind. If you're driving at say 50 miles per hour north and you have a 30 mile per hour headwind, the apparent wind is 80 miles per hour. However, if you subtract your GPS data from that, you'll get the true wind. And that's what we're able to do with this vehicle with the combination of the GPS and the anemometer on the top of the car. Uh, this is measured at two meters high to kind of get a more scientifically uh, accurate level of measurement. And eventually we are gonna add some thermodynamic data to this as well. So temperature, humidity, things like that. We'll get that at some point here in the not so distant future. Now towards the back of the vehicle, it's all about communications. Communication is very important. If you're streaming on TV, you need high speed internet to get a feed out. But if you're also storm chasing, you need live data to come in. Radar, satellite, things like that. So communication is very important. First and foremost, we have our SpaceX Starlink dish here. This is the high performance mobility dish. So we can get high speed, low latency internet pretty much anywhere. This works very well uh, when moving at highway speeds. Works pretty well in, um, we'll call it light to moderate rain as well. But when we start getting into heavier precipitation or hail, uh, that's when this begins to become a little bit less reliable. So we also make sure we have a really strong cellular connection. This is just a cell phone booster uh, that we have inside the vehicle as well for 4G and 5G data. We want to make sure at all times we have a very good signal, a disaster ongoing, you're losing power, cell phone towers are going down, power is going out. And so cell phone becomes less reliable satellite becomes the way to go. Now also towards the rear of the vehicle, we have our 360 bubble camera on the back of the car. This can see to the right, to the left, and behind while we're driving forward. Our dash mounted DSLR can capture everything that's happening out in front, but when we're driving away from something, we still wanna keep an eye on what's happening behind us or off to the sides. That's where this bubble camera comes into play. I can control it remotely from inside the vehicle. Uh, give it some distance here, it's in case we have any deviant northward movement. So this has worked very well, and this has actually been a brainchild of mine uh, coming from several past experiences where it's really hard to find a road that is pointing to the air they want to see. Oh, uh, we have a tornado, 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 tornado. Especially in Florida when you have a lot more trees and things like that. So this comes in handy. Now inside the storm chasing vehicle is of course where the magic really happens. It's truly a mobile TV studio on wheels. At least that's what I'm trying to pull off in order to get live video to TV stations and online as well. So it's all powered by a Lenovo gaming laptop. Um, my life hack, if you're looking for one, Best Buy Open Box is a great place to find laptops, especially gaming laptops. You want a big processor with a lot of cores and a dedicated GPU, and that will get pretty much everything that you need to get done. On the dash, I have just a DSLR camera, a Canon DSLR camera. This is a Canon SL2. It's a bit of an older camera, but it works great for a streaming camera. Uh, we plug it in via USB to the laptop and it also has a dedicated battery with like a dummy battery uh, right into the inverter. So we can power this DSLR and it'll keep going for the nice long duration. The nice thing with this camera is that uh, while it's also streaming to the laptop, we can record it locally in full resolution. So we don't have to have a different camera for a dash high you know, quality camera as well. But with that said, 
We do have GoPros in the vehicle as well. One that faces out to the front uh, is usually a cover uh, to get you know something that I may miss if I forget to record on this camera or something like that. It's kind of a good cover all camera to get anything that's out to the front. We have another camera that's facing inside uh, towards us inside the vehicle to kind of get our reactions and to kind of get our discussion on what's all happening. In terms of streaming, pretty much everything is done on the laptop via OBS Studio. We run that and it's a great program. Uh, we use a program called Restream to send it out to multiple different channels, including my computer at home. Uh, in terms of actually switching and choosing scenes, everything is done on our switcher, also known as a stream deck. Uh, we can switch between all of our different scenes here, and we also can completely control the camera, that 360 camera on the roof with our stream deck as well. We have presets for looking left, looking right, home, which is uh, dead center, uh, so either front or back, and we have zoom in and out as well. So all the controls for the camera is done right here, and we can see what the camera looks like in real time on the laptop. So of course, inside the storm chasing vehicle, you want to make sure you can really do everything within arm's reach. You don't want to have to keep getting in and out of the vehicle. So the camera that I'm shooting on, it's a Sony FS5 Mark II. Um, I use that camera all the time. It's my favorite camera. It's been modernized with some software upgrades and some attachments as well to kind of keep it fairly modern, even though it is a bit of an aging structure. Uh, but I do plan on upgrading eventually to the new FX, I think it's the FX6. That's the camera I'm looking at in the not so distant future. Fingers crossed we'll be able to afford that eventually with some of the stuff that we're doing over on the YouTube side of things. Uh, the laptop, of course, everything is right on here that we'll need. Um, the audio that I'm recording with uh, when we're doing streaming on TV or streaming on YouTube, it's a HyperX Quadcast, a podcast or gaming microphone that I have just mounted in the middle of the car. Really great for capturing all sorts of audio as well as some of the natural sound that's happening all around us. When you're in a hurricane, you kind of want to hear those wind gusts, right? Right. Wow. So you want to make sure you're capturing that very well. Uh, radar programs and things like that. That often comes up quite a bit of what radar programs do you use. Honestly, I don't even use that much on my laptop itself. Uh, most radar that I use these days is actually on my phone, just radar scope that I have just mounted up on my phone. That's the radar I use probably 90 to 95% of the time. I do have GR2 analyst, GR3 and radar scope on the laptop as well. Uh, but quite honestly, I don't use it as much uh, on the laptop side of things because the laptop is really dedicated to kind of getting the stream out as well as data logging all the wind data uh, on the roof of the vehicle. So it's a really great vehicle and uh, hopefully it'll treat me well for many, many more years to come. We do abuse it, but when the weather is calm and quiet, we really try to baby the car as much as possible uh, so that when the next storm comes, we can kind of abuse it again. I hope you found this kind of rig update interesting. Um, if you're looking to maybe upgrade your setup, hopefully maybe find some tips and things like that. Let me know if you found any of this interesting from your perspective. Uh, feel free to subscribe for more videos. Lots more storm chasing coming up in the months ahead, both live as well as pre-recorded on the YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like the video if you haven't already, if you liked it, of course, and we'll see you again at the next video.